Hello, what's up YouTube? Fabio here once again, and uh, today, or tonight rather, it's night time, I'm going to review uh, Saban's Masked Rider, a show which, in my opinion, does not get the crap that it, it deserves, it doesn't deserve the crap that it gets, excuse me, uh, this dyslexic is backwards. <laughs> um, it was a very fun show, you know, they, Saban was trying to go in a different direction um, at the time, you know, they were just experimenting, basically, and, um, you know, but there were other things that were going on at the time as well, but, uh, you know, but I'll talk about all that in the course of the review, but, uh, Mash Rider tells the story of Prince Dex, who is from this planet, planet, damn, planet called Edenoi, which is in another galaxy, and it's currently being invaded by, um, this guy named Count Dragon, who is actually Dex's uncle. He's the brother of the king of um, Edenoi, who is Dex's grandfather. And King Lexian, that's his name, he gives Dex the powers of the Masked Rider, which we never find out where these powers came from. We just know that the greatest warriors of Edenoi are given these powers. So Dex is given these powers, and he's sent to planet Earth. Um, in a meteor, which that doesn't make any sense to me. Wouldn't it blow the earth up or destroy? It? But anyway, you know what I mean? Um, he finds himself with this family, the Stewarts, who are, uh, it's a white dad, an Asian mom, and a white daughter, and an African-American son they adopted. So that was a very interesting aspect of the show. Um, and he takes them in, or yeah, they take him in, and he explains what's going on and who he is, and he becomes part of the family. So, you know, throughout the course of the series, Dex is fighting, you know, the various monsters that King Lexian... Well, they're, are they called monsters or... Yeah, they're monsters on this show. You know, VR Troopers, they're mutants, but they're robots. That doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, um, you know, he's just... Basically, every episode, he's fighting, you know, a different monster, and it's a different challenge and stuff like that. So the story really... or the, Yeah, the story really doesn't branch off into a, you know, a multi-arc, or, you know, it doesn't really get past the Monster of the Day episodes. But, you know, it's still a fun show, you know, so. But, you know, in terms of the show, you know, like I said, I had a lot of fun with it. I remember watching it as a kid. I actually had a lot of the toys when they came out. I remember uh, very fondly my grandfather he bought me Mass Rider, Mass Rider Super Gold, Magno, the Talking Car, and Combat Chopper one year. I think it was Easter or Christmas. And I just loved playing with those toys. My grandfather, he's no longer with us, but, you know, that's a very fond memory. And I still have my Mass Rider figure, except the antennas are missing. But, you know, what are you going to do? But, you know, this show does get hated on a lot, which I don't understand why. I mean, um, I'll talk a little bit more, but... A lot of the, the Japanese fans, the fans of Kamen Rider, where Mass Rider comes from, which is like Japan's biggest superhero, um, they just hate this show. And I know the, uh, I think the creator, or one of the people that's worked on Kamen Rider now, um, excuse me, um, I can't find any information about it, but, you know, I read somewhere that the guy just hated the show. You know, he said it was just crap and it was junk and it was an insult to the to the Japanese fans. But the, what the Japanese fans don't understand is that America is a completely different market from Japan. You know, Japan, kids shows are really violent. They can curse. They can have kids getting beat up. Here, we can't do all that. You know, especially in the, the 90s, we couldn't. Now we can because of, you know, it's become acceptable to, in society to abuse children and stuff apparently that we have to immortalize it on film, whatever. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not right that some of the stuff that they can get away with with kids in film nowadays and some of the themes of certain movies involving children, you know. You know, I don't agree with a lot of the stuff that Hollywood is doing, but that's just me and... I'm sure a lot of you guys don't agree either. But anyway, back to the point. So, like, Kamen Rider is, is apparently it's, you know, pretty violent and stuff. And, 
you know, it's very straight. And, you know, here in America, you know, we have to have humor and, you know, we have to have all these other elements. So a lot of the Japanese fans just piss on this show. And I, I, that's, un, that's very unfair in my opinion. I don't think they should just hate upon it like that. That's not right. But the show did go through some changes at the last minute because you guys remember that the season three opening episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, A Friend in Need, they team up with the Masked Rider. Now, what originally the plan was going to be was to have that three-parter lead into Mass Rider because Mass Rider for the first episode came on like a week later or a couple of days after a friend in need so it was going to you know be concurrent you know and it was heavily promoted as that but at the last minute Saban decided to change the format of the series originally uh, Dex was just going to be like your average teenager from another planet he was still going to be like a human and the show was going to take on more of a of a kind of an action oriented tone and it what they because if you look on here on YouTube there is uh, the original uh, presentation for Fox of Mass Rider in it, and it's very different from what we got to see I, I don't even think Furbus is in it the little guy that hangs out with uh, Dex I don't even think he's in it but it was gonna be more of a serious tone and then in the end Saban ended up severing all ties to Power Rangers with Mass Rider because at that time, the beginning of season three with Power Rangers, the movie had just come out and, you know, they were riding the waves of that. But the show, that's when the popularity started to, you know, uh, unwind in season three, which, you know, I will always say season three is extremely underrated because it has some of the best episodes of Power Rangers, some of the greatest uh, dramatic storylines in the season. But anyway, that's just my opinion. But, um, you know, so Masked Rider was tool, retooled to be more of a comedy, and they added the Furbis character, and they added a lot more comedic elements to the show. And I think a lot of people were turned off by that. I think they were, you know, expecting more of a show like Power Rangers or VR Troopers, you know, more of kind of a serious kids' action show with comedic touches. You know, you obviously had Balkan Skull and um, Percy on VR Troopers, but... You know, this one does take more of kind of a comedic approach, and then it has the action in it. So I think a lot of people were turned off by that. But personally, I really enjoy that. You know, also at this time, Saban, in my opinion, was really kind of drunk off of their success. Because in September 95 is when this show debuted. Uh, Power Rangers Season 3 had just started. VR Troopers was actually uh, in the process of, I think, the middle of Season 2. And then they decided to add a sh third show to the mix. So in my opinion, Saban, once again, was drunk off of the success. Because Power Rangers, at this point, was still pretty popular. Um, VR Troopers was still going good. So they figured, you know, we have two highly successful TV shows. Let's add a third and see what happens. So I think kids really couldn't keep up with, you know, all three shows at the same time. Because they would come on right, one right after another. Because VR Troopers, as I remember, would come on first. And then Masked Rider. And then Power Rangers. So that's an hour and a half of a toy commercial. Do you really think little kids are going to sit down for an hour and a half and watch three shows back to back to back? Probably not. I'm sure. I mean, I know I did it back in the day. But that's because I, you know, it was the safest thing to do in my neighborhood was watch TV. But I don't think your average kid's attention span is going to be an hour and a half. Plus, they're not even really watching the show. They're, you know, walking around playing with toys, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I just think that Saban tried to just, once again, they tried to to overdo it. That's what I really think uh, kind of downplayed and, or kind of played into the factor of the show not being as successful. And I also think that's the reason why Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation was not successful. That's going to be in that review down the road. So, um, But, yeah, I think that Saban, you know, they kind of just, they changed the format at the last minute. And they were just really drunk off, off of their success. Because the average parent isn't going to buy a shit ton of toys, you know. Once again, remember, Saban, I mean, they care about the show. But they look at it as a 30-minute toy commercial. They're making the show to sell toys. You know, that's that's what the general consensus 
is for them, you know, in my opinion. But, you know, um, so you got Power Ranger toys, you got, you know, the, the Rangers, the monsters, the Zords, VR Troopers, you got the heroes, the villains, and the, the vehicles. And same with Mass Rider, you got the heroes, the villains, and the vehicles. You really think kids are, you know, par not kids, parents. You really think parents are going to dump now, I don't remember how much toys were back then, but, you know, when when the toy market was alive, because the toy market's dead now, obviously, but, you know, I'm sure the figures, especially some of the sets and the, the robots, I'm sure that stuff wasn't cheap. So do you really think the average parent is going to shell out 70, 80 bucks, you know, for three sets of toys that their kids are going to throw around and hardly play with? Probably not, you know. So that's another thing that Saban probably did not take into fact was the toy sales are you really going to sell that many toys for that for these shows probably not and i think a lot of people were also turned off by the fact that dex is a lone hero going up against the army of monsters you know i think that the the, the main audience the the general you know mainstream audience for these shows wants to see a group of heroes you know it's the superhero show you know they want to see like the team of heroes, you know, Power Rangers, VR Troopers, you know, uh, Fantastic Four, you know, they want to see that kind of stuff, you know, and, and this was a time, not the early to mid 90s, when the comic book industry really kind of took a, a huge turn in, in, in popularity and, and its, its place in the mainstream market, you know, because also at this time you had Iron Man on, Spider Man, X Men, Batman, you had a lot of these fantastic. Uh, superhero cartoons on at the same time, you know, and I, I remember those days, you know, when you, you know, I, I miss those days, you know, the classic days of, of the DC, DC Comics was really popular at that time, not saying that they weren't popular before, Marvel Comics was too, I know DC was because they did the Death of Superman storyline and that was huge and Marvel was doing the, uh, the Onslaught storyline with all the, com with all the X-Men comics and stuff, but it, those were really good times, but, so this was really the era of the superhero show. I'm sorry, getting off topic. But so I think a lot of people were turned off by, okay, it's just one guy, you know, where's the girl character? You know, I think people were turned off by that. But personally, I loved it. You know, I like a nice change in pace, and it's nice to see just one guy going up against an army of monsters. But I know that I read somewhere that the show was actually praised because of its the family characters, the supporting characters, how they're multi multicultural, and that, I think that's a great message to send to kids. That I know we all don't look the same, but you know, under the heavens, under the sky, we're all but one big family. Like Bruce Lee said, that was a pretty much an exact quote from Bruce Lee. But you know, I think that was a great message to show to kids. You know, and and I think that you know these shows do have a lot of educational value in it, and that's why they're kind of still popular today because it's not just coming in and fighting the bad guys and going home. There is educational value in it. So I think that that was a great aspect of the show and it's something that I've really enjoyed, you know, seeing all people of all colors and creeds, you know, just, you know, being people, you know, being human beings. That's a, a, a perfect example uh, for kids and that's what we need now in children's television. You watch this crap they got nowadays and you, there's no education in it. It's all it's stupid, you know. I mean, I can't even think of a show that's on right now that has, you know, fantastic educational value. You know, like Power Rangers, you could say what you want, but Power Rangers and all these shows have educational value. You know, Magic School Bus, definitely, you know, those shows. Whatever happened to that kind of stuff, you know? It was Hannah Montana and iCarly, I mean... I don't think those have educational value when you got your stars running around and, you know, getting pregnant and doing drugs and stuff like that. What kind of message does that show? You know what I mean? But anyway, that's another topic for another day. But yeah, so, you know, in my overall kind of feeling on the show, it's just a great show. You know, I don't understand why it gets so much hatred. And Saban, you know, the first part of the series was aired on Fox Kids, the first 27 episodes. And then because the ratings and the popular or the the fan response wasn't that great, they dumped the remaining uh, 13 episodes. They just called it season two because they went on hiatus to decide what they wanted to do, and they dumped the rest of that into syndication because at this time, 
uh, Saban was doing a syndication package. Uh, they were showing, I think, Samurai Pizza Cats and uh, VR Troopers was on that because VR Troopers, once again, was aired in syndication. And then, actually, Dragon Ball Z was first aired in syndication by Saban because they did the music. And they did the Rock the Dragon theme song. Um, so Saban was really the people to get Dragon Ball Z here. You know, I, I would like to review Dragon Ball Z because it's a great anime, but that'll definitely be down the road sometime. You know, so but yeah, but yeah. So they dumped the rest of the show in syndication, doing whatever ratings it was doing because they didn't care because it was already paid for and it was kind of a bust deal for them anyway. You know, I think at that point they had realized the show was a bust and. You know, yeah, they'll get ratings and they'll sell toys, but it was just kind of like whatever it's doing, it's doing. Let's just finish out the run and, you know, whatever happens, happens. So, yeah, so in my opinion, it is definitely probably one of the most underrated Saban shows and definitely one of the unsung heroes next to Mystic Knights. I think Mystic Knights is more of an unsung hero and underrated, but that'll be in that review. But. You know, Mass Rider, it was just an opportunity that uh, they should have taken, you know, into more consideration and should have given it a chance and just kind of marketed it a little bit better. Maybe put it on a little bit later. Who knows? But, you know, hey, they tried, they fought, and they lost, but they did learn, so that's good. But in terms of the characters, um, T.J. Roberts, you know, God bless him, you know, because T.J. Roberts, I, I'm, if you're watching... Or if anybody associated with T.J. Roberts is watching or anybody on the show that's still in contact with them, I'm just giving you a shout out because you were the man back in the mid-90s because you had Mass Rider and you were doing all your movies and you really should have hit it big time, man. I mean, you should have been an action hero. You really should have. I mean, you were getting ready to hit it. I don't know what happened. Maybe you just decided to, you know acting wasn't right for you or you wanted to go to college or you know but whatever decision you made was good you know that's your thing but you know you I think if TJ would have continued acting I think he would have been an action hero not maybe in a huge huge capacity which would have been a damn shame but TJ would have made it and I'm gonna do a whole video series on the movies that he did uh, Tiger Heart uh, Tiger Heart's a classic. I mean, I grew up watching that on HBO like four times a day because that's before they had a back catalog. Power Within was great. Uh, Magic Kid 2 was pretty good. I haven't seen the first Magic Kid. I'm trying to get that. A Dangerous Place was a really good movie. Uh, Hollywood Safari, I haven't seen that one yet. But TJ, he had it, man. He really did. You know, he was a great martial artist and he was a really good actor. And it, like I said, it was a shame that he didn't hit it the big time you know, in, in the world of action films, because he would have been phenomenal, in my opinion. But TJ, you know, I love the character of Dex, because, you know, like I said, with the comedy aspect, you know, he, like, because he's from another planet, and he doesn't know how humans interact and stuff, some of the stuff that he does is really, really funny. And I like the way he talks, you know, he over-articulates everything, and, um, you know, the first episode, they're like, here, watch TV. So he watches TV all night, and then he's acting like the commercials and stuff on TV. And that's a gag that continues throughout the run of the series. And I think it's really cool. And it's a lot of fun to see TJ do that. But like I said, TJ's the man. You know, he's... I love the character of Dex. He's great. He's a great superhero. You know, I love the Mass Rider Super Gold powers and Mass Rider Super Blue powers. They were just awesome. You know, awesome. You know, it's just... It's a shame this show. It should have been bigger. You know, it should have been a bigger show. But what are you gonna do? Uh, Furbis. I mean, who could forget Furbis? I mean, Furbis was the inspiration for the Furby doll. Come on, man. Look, if you look at him. But you know, I love him. He's always getting into trouble, and or not trouble, but you know what I mean. Mischief. He's always getting into mischief. He's always eating. It's just fun. You know, I just love Furbis. He's just cute and cuddly, and I think a lot of people like that about this show. You know, Furbis was cool and. Um, <clears throat> I like, uh, you know, for, uh, uh, the dad is, um, allergic to Furbis, which is funny. That's kind of a running gag on the show. I enjoy that. You know, it's, <clears throat> excuse me. It's just a lot of fun, you know, with Furbis. He was always getting into fun. Uh, David Sendstrom plays Hal Stewart, who's the dad, and he's a handyman. He's a vendor. He's your typical American dad. He's just, he's really cool. 
and he did the voice of uh, what the, what the hell's his name? King Mondo on Power Rangers Zio. So he did Mass Rider, and then he was also doing some of the voice work, and then he did King Mondo, which is pretty cool. But I like him. He's a good actor, and um, I like the character a lot. You know, I enjoy the role. So, yeah, I, you could tell he had a lot of fun. Uh, Barbara Stewart, played by Candace Keita. Um... Somebody's got the radio on. <laughs> Um, she's done She's done she was in Barbed Wire, she was on the Wayne's Brothers, uh Felicity, even Stevens, VIP with <coughs> excuse me, with Pam Anderson. Um just trying to see some of the other stuff she's done. She's done a lot of stuff. Uh, she was in the Bad News Bears remake. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Um, she's done a lot of TV work. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I like the mom. You know, she's kind of like your... She's a homemaker. And, you know, she's like your typical average mom. You know, she's great. Um, <coughs> damn. Thirsty. Um, but I enjoy her character. She's really cool. Uh, Molly Stewart, who's played by Rhiannon Slover. You know, she's always trying to get Dex, she's always trying to help Dex get used to being an earthling and trying to help him get on the right path and stuff like that. And, and then Dex supports her. So, you know, um, you know, they're always helping each other out, which is cool. I like that. And then Albie is played by Ashton McArn. Um, and, you know, he's the little brother and he looks up to Dex, you know, as any little brother would. And, you know, he's just helping Dex out as much as he can. And, um, you know, he just tries to be a little brother and support his big brother and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Um, in terms of the villains, I really enjoy Count Dragon. Or Count, they say Dragon, but it's Dragon. And then uh, Ken Merchix uh, is the dude who does his voice. And he um, did voices... He was Reptilier on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He was Wopsicle and Lionizer on In Space. He was Hartichoke on Lost Galaxy. He actually had a speaking part, you know, like a regular part on Time Force. He was one of the doctors, Dr. Michael Zaskin. Uh, he was Shadow Chromite and Translucitor on Power Rangers Turbo. And he was Nazir on Power Rangers Wild Force. So he's done a lot of voiceover work. And a lot of the footage from... Japan was not really used for Count Dragon. It was only like wide shots and stuff. But a lot of the close-ups, it's Ken Merchick's in costume um, as Count Dragon. So that's really cool. I like that. And Nefaria is played by Jennifer Tung. And like once again, a lot of the close-ups is American footage of her. And she was in Kung Pao. She was the chick with the one boob. <laughs> but I mean, she's a good villainess. I enjoy her. Uh, Cyclopter is the blue robot guy. He looks cool. He's like a biker. He's like the badass, uh, you know, villain. He's voiced by a dude named Steve Kramer. And I know he's done more with Power Rangers. Um, uh, he did um, You Can't on Big Bad Beetleborgs. Uh, okay, he did the Gnarly Gnome, Slippery Shark, Robo Goat, Hatchasaurus, and Cyclopter on pa Mighty Morphin. He did Wolfbane on Zeo, Dreadfeather on Turbo, Darkonda, and Darklipter on In Space. That's where I know him from. Uh, Electropede on Time Force, and the Turbine Org on Wild Force. And then he did, he did Drillbot, Terminoid, and Transgressor on VR Troopers. So that's cool. So that's where I knew him from, as Dar uh, Darkonda. Ha ah! ha! But I like Cyclopter. He's a cool villain. And then Michael Sorich does Double Face. Who, he wears that green coat. And he's got the two faces. Hence Double Face. But I like him. And he's he's pretty cool. And then Gork is that ugly looking dude that's always speaking in rhymes. So he does, he kind of gets annoying. But, um, you know, that's part of the character, you know. So, um, you know, what else has he done, you know. Just looking at some stuff here. Uh, he did Gore. He did another uh, voice of Reptilia. You know the episodes where the monsters come back. It's never the same voice actor. 
He did Mole Monsters on Beetleborgs Metallics, Strikeout on Power Rangers Turbo, Motor Mantis on Lost Galaxy, and the narrator for Wild Force and Fiddlebot on VR Troopers. Cool. Uh, name the dude's name that plays Gork is Michael McCona McConaughey McConaughey. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, Magno is the car, who it's the red car, and it's voiced by Wendy Lee. Wendy Lee does not really need an introduction. Um, she's awesome. And Combat Chopper, who's voiced by none other than Bulk, or uh, excuse me, Eugene Skullovich himself, Jason Narvi, and he's always kind of like, yeah, okay, boss, you know. I like Combat Chopper, and he can change into Super Gold or Super Blue, depending on, you know, when they need it. So, um, Patsy Carbuncle is the next door neighbor, and she's a spoiled brat, and she's always trying to be better than everybody and stuff, but she's a cute girl, and, you know, she's... You know, the comic relief, same with Herbie. Um, you know, he's the geek, but, um, you know, he's just kind of, like, trying to, like, win Patsy over and stuff, you know. So, but, you know, he never wins, but, you know, it's okay. Uh, Moon Dude. Moon Dude's cool because he's the guy that owns the arcade. He's, like, this stoner character. He's funny. He's always saying something funny or stupid. Uh, the Masked Rider Warriors is what they used in the last episode. And a lot of fans got pissed off because they screwed up all the names because they cut out. Because of using the different footage, um, they had to cut characters out to make it fit. And so they got confused. But the original Kamen Rider and a bunch of the other ones come in. And, um, you know, they don't really talk or anything. They just kind of come in and fight in the last episode. But that was cool. I really enjoyed that episode. Um, with all the different warriors, so that was awesome. But the original, they call him uh, Mass Rider Leader, or Warrior Leader is voiced by Kim Strauss, who did Ninja. So, nothing wrong with that. But now I want to kind of get into the episodes. The first episode was a two-parter. It actually aired as a one-hour special, Escape from Edenoi, where Dex gets the Mass Rider powers and comes to Earth in a meteor. Like I said, <clears throat> I don't understand how, like, the town didn't blow up because it's a meteor. <laughs> I don't get it. But, you know, he tells his story to his fam to the family that takes him in. And Count Dragon, you know, is coming. So now Dex has to transform and get ready for battle, which leads into part two, where he fights the Destructive Sphere, which is one of the monsters. And then he has to fight another monster because they're going to attack the high school. So that was pretty cool. Um... Lex, or, uh, License the Thrill is where Dex first goes to school, and then, um, Furbis, you know, tr wants to go to school with him, you know, so he sneaks in his backpack, and then, you know, um, Count Dragon sends the maggots to fight Dex, and the maggots are like the foot soldiers, they're like the putties, so you see the American footage when Dex fights them, and a thing about the, the footage, tra or, you know, the footage editing and, and stuff, it's really bad in some points because they actually use footage from other Common Rider shows because this one is actually apted from Common Rider Black RX. And then they actually use footage from other Common Rider shows for whatever reason. And then a lot of stuff is you'll see Dex, you'll see the monster, the monster will be like, all right, we're going to fight and do this. And Dex is like, all right, so Dex will like punch and then it'll cut to the Japanese footage and then Dex will get hit. And then he'll fall. And he always wears the same clothes as the Japanese counterpart to match the footage. But, you know, it's just kind of crappy when they do it, you know. But what are you going to do, right? Um, in Pet Nappers, uh, they try to, the bad guys try to kidnap Furbis. So, you know, Dex is trying to save him. Um... Bugs on the Loose is where... Uh, Hal and Albie are bug hunting, and they actually get kidnapped, and they're going to get turned into soldiers for Count Dragon, so Mass Rider's got to fight him and then save, you know, his dad and his brother. Arcade Ace is pretty cool because Albie gets challenged to a video game playoff, but Dex ends up filling in for him, and then, you know, a monster gets set loose. Super Gold is pretty good, where uh, Dex's friend Danaeus comes to earth to give dex the powers of super gold but he ends up getting kidnapped by king lex or um not 
King Lick. Count Dragon and turned into Robo Rider, who is the evil counterpart to the Masked Rider. So Dex has to fight his friend and then ends up getting the Masked Rider Super Gold powers. So that's pretty cool. I got that. I got that one on video. The first that and the first two episodes came out on video, which I, I'm actually going to show in a couple of videos down the road. Uh, Grandma Factors, where Grandma stops by. And she gets kidnapped by Count Dragon, so the Masked Rider's got to go save her. Um, uh, water, water everywhere is where the family goes to the pool for the day, and um, Count Dragon to start. Um, he releases this gas, and it doesn't affect Dex, but it affects everyone else who attacks Dex. So he has to figure out how to stop that. And then, um, save the day. Uh, Furbus's first Christmas is where they're preparing for the holidays. And Dex is kind of homesick. But, you know, Nefario uh, launches this evil plot. So Dex has to save her because they kidnap, or fight her because they kidnap Santa Claus. So he's got to go save Santa. Um, they were going to release that on video, but because the ratings were bad and stuff, they just, they, they didn't do it. A uh, stranger from the north is when a foreign exchange student comes to town and um, Dex befriends him and, you know, they, uh, because Dex, because this kid's a foreigner, you know, Count Dragon's forces end up kidnapping him instead of Dex, so now a masked rider has to save the kid, so that's pretty cool. Um... Dance Crazy was pretty cool because, you know, Dance Fever hits the kids. So, um, they're competing in this dance-off and then Dex has to fight, you know, the monster. You know, it's always fighting the monster. But the some of the dances that Dex does is pretty funny in this episode. I do remember that one. Um, the Green-Eyed Monster was a cool episode because that actually features a song. Um, I think it's Ride the Machine or Take Them Down, which was written by Ron Wasserman. Ron Wasserman actually worked on the music for this show a little bit in the early stages of the show, and then he would leave uh, Saban a little bit later than uh, after that. But he actually did this song, which they I think they ended up not using on Power Rangers, but they use it in this show. So that's a pretty interesting little antidote. Um, but they go to this dirt bike track, and they just ride around for the day and stuff. That was pretty cool. Um, the heat is on is when Furbus, little Furbus gets sick, so you know, they gotta, because, uh, Count Dragon creates this monster that intensifies the heat, so they gotta turn, you know, they gotta cool things down to help Furbus, you know. Um, Know Your Neighbors was cool, it's because, the, um, the Stewarts go on this TV show where they face off against, um, the neighbors, with the, uh, with the girl next door, the snobby girl, so that's pretty cool. Um... The dash is the one where Dex they get Dex to try out for the track team, and he has super speed, so they accept him. Uh, Battle of Bands is pretty cool because that's when um, they uh, they have this Battle of Bands competition. So you know they got to fight. He's got to fight the monster again to make sure you know nothing happens. Um, Furbus Maximus is pretty cool. Um, like he. Um, he eats something, I forget what it is, and then he starts acting strange, so they have to reverse the spell. Um, Unmasked Rider, uh, Patsy's her name, I forgot for a second. Patsy's trying to discover more about Dex, and then Dex ends up using his new super blue powers. So that's pretty cool, because Danaeus comes back to give him the super blue powers. Uh, Furbus's day out is when the family goes to a restaurant to celebrate the end or their anniversary, and Furbus goes with them and then has his own little adventure. So that was pretty cool. I like all the Furbus episodes. I can't uh, disagree with those. Alright, now I had to write these down because I couldn't find episode guides. Jobless is where Count Dragon uses this evil, like, soda to create a monster at Dex's new job at the arcade. And then they're going to plan to blow him up. But, you know, Dex isn't going to let that happen. Back to Nature was pretty cool when they go camping. And Furbus goes missing, so the villains are going to try and blow up this bridge to, um, you know, to stop Dex. 
And, like, um, they're always trying to steal, like, they're trying to get Dex's powers of Mass Rider for themselves. You know, that's kind of the their goal in, in every episode. And they say it in, like, every episode. It's like, well, then we'll defeat Dex and have the Mass Rider power. So they're always trying to get the powers for themselves. Um, showdown at Leah Wood High. Um, Dex and this other kid are getting bullied, so he wants the, the bully wants to fight him, so Dex is trying to, like, you know, prevent the fight and stuff like that. And then Power Out is where Dex gets kidnapped by this subterranean monster and he's trying to get out. Now, that was the final episode that aired on Fox Kids. The remaining, like I said, the remaining 13 episodes were aired in syndication because, once, like I said, Fox you know, um, I guess they decided to not show the rest of the episodes because the ratings and the response was not that good. I don't know exactly what happened, and I can't really find information on this show, you know, I guess because Saban busted out not even even on it, so they kind of, they just dumped it, you know, it's like, all right, you know, just dump it and not worry about it, so there you go. Um, but Saturday Morning Invasion, where this good alien comes, like, he knows Dex, and Count Dragon is going to use him against Dex, um, you know, and to create these big monsters, which Dex can't fight. Uh, Passenger Furbus was cool, because Dragon launches this attack while Dex and the Stuarts are in the air going to visit their grandmother. So Dex has to get on the ground somehow to fight the monsters. That was cool. Mixed Doubles is where Count Dragon clones the family, and he puts them in their place, so to confuse Dex, um, but it doesn't end up working out, so, and then he also clones himself to fight, uh, Mass Rider, which also doesn't work. Million Dollar Furbus, uh, was pretty cool, because, um, Albie enters his name and Furbus's name in, um, this contest, and Furbus wins, so now they have to make Furbus as a human, to, you know, win the prize money and stuff like that, but they end up giving it away. So that was pretty cool. Ectophase Albi, I like that because, um, I think I remember watching this one on TV, you know, it just pops out of my head from time to time. But they're playing this baseball game, and then Albi actually gets the powers of Mass Rider because, um, this ball hits him and Dex, and they actually switch. So that was really cool, I really enjoyed that, but... We end up finding out that it's a dream because uh, Alvy gets knocked out by the hit and he finds out that it's just a dream. But that was a cool episode. I really like that. Uh, Race Against Time is where um, uh, Count Dragon uses Alvy's RC car to send it to where uh, Magno and Chopper are to destroy them while Dex has to fight this car monster. That was a cool episode. Catatomic is where... Molly's going to try out for cheerleading, and Dragon uses the mascot as his new monster. Um, so he has to fight him. Indigestion was cool, where um, Dex, or Count Dragon uses this toxin to poison Dex, so he's having these nightmares and stuff, and, you know, these bugs are running around his stomach and stuff like that. Same with Dex at Bat. That's one where... Um, oh, I'm sorry, different episode. Uh, Dex at Bat is where... Um, he enter, Dex enters this haunted house to solve this mystery, and he ends up fighting um, this monster, which is pretty cool. Um, the invade, or that's, okay, they, see, Wikipedia has the, they screwed the episode listing up. And same with uh, Toku Central, or Center. They screwed up because they, they aired the last episode, like, five episodes before, so it doesn't make sense, but whatever. Um, but uh, the Eye of Edenoi is where Dex must take on um, a three-eyed monster, and if he looks into the eye, the third eye of the monster, it'll actually freeze him, so he can't do it. And then Exit Nefaria, Enter Barbaria, is where um, Count Dragon is, you know, sick of Nefaria failing, so he transfers her powers to, to the mom. So Mass Rider's got to break the spell. Um, Detention is where uh, Dex gets this monster implanted in his brain and he starts acting weird, which gets him sent to detention. So now he has to escape detention and get rid of the monster. And then the final episode, the invasion of Leowood, where Count Dragon is um, he's making the Masked Rider surrender or he's going to destroy the city. 
So Mass Rider calls upon the other Mass Rider warriors to save the day. And that was, like I said, a really good final episode where, you know, they ended the show pretty good with that. I really enjoyed that. So, um, you know, they did a good job with that, having all the different uh, Mass Rider warriors. So that was a lot of fun. But, you know, kind of wrapping this up, you know, once again, Mass Rider, they just, they, they were high off of the success, or drunk off the success of their previous shows. So they wanted to, you know, try to, to up the ante and see if they could do three shows at once, which has to be, which is exhausting on everybody. But, you know, they tried, you know, like I said, they tried, they fought, and, you know, unfortunately they did fail. But it's a great underrated show. Um, you know, if you haven't seen it, check it out. You might like it. Just don't be too critical on it. I think just too many people are too critical on it. But check it out. You might like it. So uh, thanks, guys, for watching once again. And stay tuned because next I'm going to review my favorite Saban series, Big Bad Beetleborgs and Beetleborgs Metallics. I'm just going to do a dual review. So stick around for that, guys. Peace.